was asked to speak for 10 minutes. This live show is supposed to run for 10 minutes. Um, if I'm still speaking at the end, I understand that I'm likely to implode. The title of this paper can be translated <coughs> as Coastland Community Habitat. The last is a simple translation. Kinevin has no equivalent in English. It means to have both a sense of place and time, to be conscious of identity and of belonging. It was a term that Baroness Andrews, in a report to Welsh Government in 2014, uh, focused on uh, when she was examining what cultural institutions in the heritage and arts sectors can do to address poverty, and particularly how we can use our cultural knowledge and ex expertise in these areas. And we're talking not just about poverty in terms of fiscal poverty, but poverty of opportunity and poverty of ambition. Arthur Deer has been a project undertaken by three of the Welsh Archaeological Trusts with grant aid support from CADR. The Trusts were also able to bring in additional resources from other bodies to support some aspects of the work. Full government support for the project, which was always only planned to run for three years, was withdrawn in 2014-15. Since then, there's a small allocation that allows the Trust to provide about 10 days staff support each year. At a time of greater public awareness of the potential impact of climate change, the project was designed to recruit and train volunteers to monitor and record the archaeology of the coastline. All three trusts identified areas of coastline subject to various erosion threats and which could be safely monitored. They then either set up new groups through public advertising and meetings or encouraged existing heritage orientated societies to take part. Over three years, the groups in each area were supported by a dedicated trust staff member in each region, about 18 months of actual time. The staff members provided both on- and off-site training and encouragement, and coordinated recording and reporting outputs, including updating historic environment records and producing annual project reports. Activity and discoveries were also <coughs> reported through social media. As well as observing change to known sites, the work has resulted in the identification of more than 500 new sites. Our volunteers have helped us increase knowledge about the areas in which we operate. From a purely archaeological perspective, the project has been very successful, none more so than following severe storms in early January 2014. We mobilised our Arthur volunteers to record the impact of that event in terms of both damage to known historic assets and also the numbers and range of new sites exposed. These included unknown prehistoric peat beds, submerged forests, wreck sites, and Second World War um, anti landing tanks, uh, anti landing tracks, for example. This information was fed into Welsh Government as part of an impact report uh, of, of that event. However, what I would like to particularly consider in a little more detail today is the experience of the participants with particular reference to the groups set up by the David and Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trusts. And in doing this, bring in a context of community, Kamanid, and belonging to place, Kinevin. The pattern of engagement, activity and delivery was planned slightly differently from trust to trust. David wanted to have blanket coverage of their coastline and mainly used existing history societies to work along stretches of the coastline, in and extending out from their own locality. This was most successful with the Dale Angle, Cardigan and Clethley History Societies. The only new group that was formed was the Abermaur Research Group. In Glamorgan, the plan was for nine groups to monitor discrete areas of the coastline, each centred on a particular community. The Kenfig History Society provided the base for one group, but the others were built up from scratch. Three of these groups, that had been established in Gower, later merged into a single group. The Clatwick Major Arthur Deer Group also formed close links with the Kenfig Arthur Deer Group. A year after completion of the project, a number of the groups continued to flourish. This is one measure of success. In Glamorgan and Gwent, the Clatwick Major Arthur Deer Group and some members, some members of the Clatwick Major History Society have now formed the Clatwick Major Archaeological Society and have widened their interests and activity inland something that the Abermaur Research Group has also done in David. These groups appear to be identifying with their place and it's passed more overtly. 
Even where the groups are less active, the impact of the project has led to an increase in volunteering with the Trusts. More than 30 former Arthur Deer volunteers have been active on other field and records, particularly historic environment records, work. Some of this work is grant funded with defined volunteer inputs. Some is not project specific, but helps the Trust deal with legacy matters. But our overall, our capacity, our support has been increased. Two former volunteers have now started formal archaeological learning, one doing a degree. Another volunteer has gained archaeological employment. Conversely, some volunteers who started on the project only continued for a short while. Informal feedback and measured responses from the volunteers identified that they learnt new skills, as well as more about archaeology, heritage in their locality and their coastline in a way that was enjoyable and informative. Generic and social learning, learning scores were all very high, 90 to 100. The degree of provided building up training, and particularly training in both digital and digitally applied archaeological recording techniques, has an, had an important part to play in this. Bringing in specific external training through the Nautical Archaeological Society was greatly appreciated. Participants, and particularly those who were committed throughout the project and beyond, have improved confidence in their archaeological knowledge, skills and abilities, as they have become more competent. When closely involved in the works, they have been extremely willing to help, impart knowledge and get involved with recording. However, and I think this is interesting, and perhaps for some people would be reassuring, they are aware of their limitations. David Archaeological Trust found that most of their groups were nervous of doing anything by themselves and keen to be supported. And this was also true with the other trusts. The volunteers nevertheless associated themselves with particular sites that they had been shown to them. And this led to some trust-led follow-up works, excavation of the medieval settlement at St Ishmael's in Carmarthenshire, recording of the Anislas Hulk in Cardiganshire, and the investigation and recording of prehistoric trackways in Swansea Bay. The age demographic of the volunteers was predominantly 55 plus, and people were mainly retired. There were also some participants in the 18 to 25 year range, but very few in the 25 to 55 age range, despite the fact that much of the volunteering was undertaken at weekends. Not all the participants wanted to take part in field work, some, prepared, some preferred to help with off-site re record and reporting work. One group had an almost entire focus on undertaking historical research. Sometimes what was planned was not what the participants were themselves either interested in or felt themselves capable of delivering. Several of the particularly active groups identified, agreed, and undertook self-motivated field work. The Abermau research group have looked for Mesolithic flint scatters. The Gower group recorded a shipwreck on Clangennis Beach. The Kenfig group test pitted a feature within the Kenfig dune system, and the Barry group surveyed World War II structures at Lavernock. The Glamorgan groups have produced written reports of the work they've done for publication in Archaeology in Wales. The newly formed Archaeology Society in Kenfig has started to undertake an audit of all the registers on the regional historic environment records and national monument records for Clantrick Major. And the Kenfig group have secured funding to undertake geophysical surveys of the castle earthworks at Kenfig. Perhaps here we have started to see a transition whereby our volunteers, as well as belonging to and closely identifying with particular places, now also see themselves as part of a wider archaeological community that acti actively connects, cares for uh, our historic environment and then shares these important values within their own and other communities. Top of that, thank you.